In this video, you will learn how to create a WordPress website header using Bricks Builder. I will teach you step by step in this video. But remember, if you ever face any issues, feel free to comment down below. I will be here to help you out. Now, let's get started. Before you start making your website header, make sure you have already set up the necessary pages. To get started with the header, the first thing you will need is a navigation menu that you will use into your website header. Here you can see that I have already set up the required pages. However, if you haven't done so yet, you can easily add pages by clicking on the add new button. Now let's create a navigation menu. To do this, hover over appearance and click on menu. Add your desired menu name. Just I have added main menu and then click on the save menu button. Next in the pages tab, click on view all and select the pages you would like to include in your navigation menu. You can choose them manually or you can select all of them by clicking on the select all checkbox. Once you have made your selection, click on add to menu. Additionally, you can easily adjust the order of the pages in menu by clicking and dragging them to your preferred position. Finally, to save your menu, just click on the save menu button. Now let's move on to creating our website header. First hover over bricks and click on templates. Now click on add new and give your template a name like header and make sure to choose header as the template type. Click on publish to save your changes. Click on edit with bricks to continue. To start building our header with bricks builder, the first step is to select a header structure. Simply click on a section and it will automatically add a section with an inner container. For the main section, we will make it full width. Now for the inner container, choose the width that suits your needs or your website layout. I am going to select a width of 1200 pixel for the container which means my header will be 1200 pixel wide. I am going to add three columns within the container for our header. The first column is for the logo the second column for the navigation and the third for a call to action button. However, feel free to choose the columns that suits your specific needs. Now let's adjust the width of the columns. For the first column, which is for the logo, choose the width of 25%. The second column, which contains the website navigation menu, should be set to 60% width. Finally, for the third column, for the call to action button, select a width of 15%. Select first column, click on plus sign, then type or search for logo widget. Once you find it, just drag and drop into the first column. Click on the text and head over to content tab. Click on select image to choose your logo image. After selecting the image, choose the logo column and align it vertically center. To adjust the size of your logo image, simply select the image and adjust the width to fit your logo. In my case, I am going to set it to 200 pixels. Now let's proceed to second column. To add our navigation menu, search for the menu widget and simply drag it into the second column. Afterward, select the entire column and ensure it's vertically centered. Horizontally, we want to align to the right. 
Now add 30 pixels of padding from the right side. To customize the space between the navigation items, navigate to the content tab, click on top level menu and add margin as needed. In the typography setting, select the typography color, font size, font family and font weight to match your website design. Let's move on to the third column. Click or drag the button widget into the third column. Ensure it's vertically centered. Horizontally, we want to align it to the right. Now select the button widget in the content tab and toggle the button to make it rounded. Add the desired button text. To adjust the button's text style, go to style section and click on typography. Here you can fine tune the button's typography to match your design. To save your settings, just click on save. Now let's take a preview of the header. For more realistic look, let's add a box shadow to the header. Select your section, navigate to the style section and select the box shadow tab. Input the following values. Set 0 pixels for x axis, 4 for the y axis, 15 pixels for blur and minus 5 pixels for a spread. Choose the color black, set color opacity to 0.25 and then click to save. Let's add some padding to the top and bottom for better look. In the style section, navigate to the layout tab add 10 pixels of padding from top and bottom. Moreover, you can add a hover effect to your navigation links. To achieve this, click on pseudo elements and select the hover state. Then go to top level menu tab typography and modify the text color. Since we are in the hover state, the navigation link's color will be changed accordingly. To exit the hover state, simply click on the X icon. In the preview mode, you will notice the navigation links change color when you hover over them. As you can see, our header is looking perfect for desktop devices. Now let's make it responsive for smaller devices such as tablet and mobiles. To check how your header appears on different devices, right click and select inspect. Then choose the device you want to check the header's responsiveness on. First, let's check it on iPad Pro. You can see that our header looks great on the iPad Pro. Now Let's move on to checking it on an iPad. For the iPad, we will need to make some adjustments to ensure our header is responsive on iPad. Let's start by reducing the font size of the button typography. Additionally, we are going to change the order of the columns to shift the navigation column to the right. You will soon understand why we are doing this. To change the column order, select the navigation column 
then click on the search icon and type order to find the column order settings set it to 3 for the navigation column as you can see we have successfully changed the column order however our navigation links are now overflowing from the screen to address this issue we need to add breakpoints to the navigation to do this select the navigation widget in the content section you will find an option for breakpoints choose the tablet portrait breakpoint now simply adjust the both columns width to align them to the right side as hamburger icon is not perfectly centered we need to make some adjustments to do this add a negative margin from the top side to make it center now let's check the navigation menu by clicking on the hamburger icon you will notice that navigation menu appears on the left side to move it to the right side select the navigation widget head over to content tab and scroll down click on mobile menu and under the position option simply select right you can also align the navigation links to the center feel free to make any adjustments to achieve your desired look if you would like to change the color of the close button in the same tab scroll down to bottom you will find the option to change the close button color to add padding to the navigation links go to top menu tab and simply add a padding from top For the mobile devices, we need to make a few adjustments. First, select the navigation column and remove the padding. Next, select the logo column and increase the column width. Finally, select the button column and adjust the width. These adjustments will ensure that your header looks great on mobile devices. That's it guys. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any question or need any help, feel free to leave a comment below. I will do my best to help you out. Thank you for watching.